Dudes, what's happening? This is Trent, and this is Trent's Comment Corner. It is Friday, June 22nd. This is episode 11. Uh, what we do on this show is I'm going to answer your questions uh, from the comments section. So if you have questions for me, you can leave those in the comments section. I go through the previous week's worth of questions every Friday, and this, is, this show is about you, basically. This is your chance to ask me whatever you want to ask me about was my favorite food was my favorite no uh that's not that's not the stuff you want to know you want to know how to be a badass artist you want to know how to break into the industry you want to know how to make indie games you want to know how to make comic books that's what i'm here to talk about baby let's improve some art let's dig into the comments all right let's shuffle on shuffle on over to the shuffle on over to the comment section here well this week i did a couple of videos one was how to paint out your line art uh, the second video was how to use Camtasia Studio 3. Now the Camtasia Studio 3 video really didn't get a lot of views, but uh, I felt it was necessary to kind of show, a lot of people ask me all the time, hey, uh, what kind of video editing software are you using? I use Camtasia Studio 3 almost exclusively, and I wanted to walk you through that whole process of, of how I edit videos. It's a super easy program to use. Not a lot of views on that one, not a lot of hype about Camtasia. I think there are other options that people are more interested in using, but this is just what I do. That's uh, that's what I do, so that's what I showed you. I never know if, if, if it's a video people are gonna love or hate. The painting out your line art video is already up to 5,000 views in less than three days, so that, I consider that a smashing delivery. I delivered the goods. Uh, there are a lot of comments about those two videos, specifically about the painting your line art video. Damaged Android suggested that uh, if he has all of his line art on one layer, he just locks that layer uh, so that way he's just coloring the line art. That is a, a good way to do it. I think there are a number of different ways. Uh, I do suggest you check out his, uh, he did put a link in his comment. Uh, so if you go to that video, you can find his link there. Look for Damaged Android. Thanks, Damaged Android. Dante Ezio says, I was having a conversation with a friend about video games and redesigns and what we would like to see get a redesign. For example, I'd love to see a Zelda made in a more Final Fantasy style of game and design. Brother, I already got you covered, Dante. Uh, check out my redesign of Link. It's already, I already did it, brother. It's kind of Final Fantasy style. I mean, that's exactly what I had in mind when I did it. I was mixing in a little bit of like Monster Hunter because uh, I can't resist. It's my Capcom roots. But if you did one, I'd love to see it. So if you if you do sit down and do that with your buddy, uh, please share it with me. I'd like to see what you got is what I'm trying to say. I'm not very eloquent today. I need more coffee. Ben T says, hello, Trent. I was looking for a drawing tablet and found a used pen sketch M912A drawing tablet. I was wondering, or is it a good tablet to buy for someone who is starting with digital art? Ben, I don't, man, I don't know. I've never seen a pen sketch M912. Uh, maybe some people in the comments can help Ben out. If it were me and I were in your position, I really wouldn't go much further than a, a Huey on. Uh, they have, a, I think, a $60 tablet. Another option is the Gaumon line of tablets, also very affordable, and, and you do have to charge the pen on those, but I just got confirmation that you can get about a month out of one charge if you're drawing almost daily. Gaumons are good, and Wacom even has a, uh, a pencil tablet. It's a much smaller, more affordable, I think $90 tablet, uh, which will also get you there too. Another hot button topic, Spatelapsta. Uh, says, uh, hey Trent, have you seen Shadi Safadi's concept art is dead talk? How doomed am I if I don't know any 3D skills? Well, Spatelapsta, let me tell you, man. Uh, Shadi's a cool dude. I've had a couple of interactions with him. He comes across as kind of cocky, but he's, he's a smart fella. It's the big difference between art and production. And in production, all that matters is that it's beautiful and that it's a cool idea and it's a cool design. That's all that matters, baby. So however you get there, if that means that you're using photos or you're smashing together old paintings that you did or you're using... Uh, uh, some automated software, you're posing 3D models to get your poses for your characters and for your uh, your setting. I All through Diablo, I was painting over gray boxes of the actual space so that I knew, oh, okay, so there's collision here. All right, I'm going to put a row of barrels, a stack of barrels there for like Bastion's Keep or something like that. Uh, they provide that to you. I would highly recommend, though, Spatelapsta. I love saying your name, brother. Uh, 
Yeah, dig into a basic 3D package. You know what, in one weekend, you can learn Blender. You can learn basics of Blender and start blocking out perspective for your environments. And I'll tell you, it'll save you a ton of time. You don't have to think so much about lighting or think so much about your perspective. If you're doing two point, three point, or you've got a very uh, fisheye type of a lens, 3D is gonna help you out a ton. You save some time. Uh, but if you're a purist and you want to do like galleries and stuff, that's a totally different beast, man. You don't need 3D to do that. You don't even need to know anatomy to do that. You can just be whatever you are if you wanted to build a following or go independent. But if you want jobs, 3D is going to help you. The 3D stuff that I learned helped me out tremendously with doing concept art is what I'm trying to say. Richard Roach says, hi, I've followed you for a long time. I want to ask, how do I promote my art and get a job? Uh, first of all, Richard, the, the best thing you can do is, is uh, get a, an ArtStation account. It's a website where a lot of artists post their portfolios. It presents it really nicely. Uh, get your artwork up there or get a deviant art and just start posting every single day. Every day. If you're looking for work, you should be posting artwork every day, even if it's a rough sketch. Here's my ideas. Hey, I, I made some progress. Here's the update. Every single day post uh, on those channels, on those forums. You'll get feedback from people. Ask people for feedback. And then uh, as in terms of getting work, check out my video, How to Get Paid to Draw on uh, here on YouTube. I've done a, a extensive uh, breakdown of several different ideas on different ways that you can get yourself paid and start uh, making money as an artist. Turtle TV says, hey Trent, what do you think of the glowing pen in Sketchbook Pro? Uh, you know what, I mostly just use the brushes that I use from my custom brush kit, the Dominaire, uh, which if you haven't seen it, it's uh, basically my, custom brushes. I use like the oily brush and pencil, regular pencils and things like that. I haven't worked in the glow brush, but since you mentioned that to me, I'm going to work it in, see if I can give it a shot for a little while. That might actually help out with some of the, uh, the lighting effects and things for uh, painting out line art too. So thanks for reminding me of it. I just kind of forgot about it, I guess. Anthony Potts asks, have you got any tips on scanning pencil drawing? Uh, into digital line art other than retracing everything. Do, do not retrace everything. If you got a nice clean scanned image, you set that, that line art to a multiply layer and you paint under it. And if you do it any other way, you're doing it wrong. No man, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. If you follow my, uh, my process on painting out your line art, uh, got you covered, baby. You just back that off to like 40, 50%. You start painting in behind it. Bing, bang, and a boom. Got yourself a solution right there. If you want to keep the line art, just keep it at 100% opacity. The bam That's how comics are done. If you're asking about inking, then yeah, you kind of have to retrace it. Sorry. Just ink it on paper. What are you talking about? And then scan the inked artwork. Pip Pop Pop says, hey man, I noticed you're going to be featured in the next Imagine Effects issue again. Can't wait to get my hands on it. I'm not an artist, but I love this mag and we get an entire issue about concept art. Nice. Pip Pop Pop, that magazine is mostly all about concept art uh, and the ideation process, specifically this, uh, this issue I know is more sketchbook focused. Uh, I've, I've collaborated with the Imagine Effects dudes many times. I love working with them. So it's really nice to be featured. They're very, very friendly. And, uh, and it's overall just a great magazine for concept artists if you like long form type of tutorials and tips. Every single issue I learn something. And dude, that's like, I don't get that out of a video game magazine. I don't get that out of most other magazines. But for my craft, if you're an artist, a digital artist, Man, pick up Imagine FX magazine. You can get the digital version. Most of the artwork that they're going to feature of mine in there, you've kind of seen a lot of it before. Uh, if you follow my channel, it's mostly just the early sketches of a lot of my designs and things like that. I didn't realize they announced that already. Thanks, Pip. Can I call you Pip? Can I just call you Pip? Pip up. Halfway through recording this, my camera just cut out on me and made a big blob, a big blurry blob. So I'm just gonna do audio for a portion here. Really great question from Recon Badger coming in. Hey Trent, I'm on my final term here at the Feng Zhu School of Design. And I was wondering how important line art is in the industry since we do a lot of it here. I'm asking because one of the lecturers said that uh, when he gets work, clients want painted pieces. So should I push my painting skills in the final projects or is liner and color wash good enough for portfolio? Uh, this is a great question. 
um, because you're going to get different answers from different people. And it also depends on the studio you're applying to. The best thing I can suggest is to have a little bit of everything in, in your back pocket so that when you're showing your portfolio, you got really awesome high level uh, kind of high concept paintings in the front. You've got lots of breakdowns of line art, of props and things that can be built in as, uh, by a modeler. You've got different angles of your crates and your chairs and your tables and things like that in the middle. And you've got a couple other really flashy, nice photo bash type of paintings or, or something that's very rendered, depending on the style of the game that you're applying for. And uh, such as if you're applying for Overwatch, hell yeah, you want a lot of line art in there. You know, if you're applying for League of Legends, yeah, they use a lot of line art. Even the final game has a lot of line art around the characters. But you also want to be able to have those painting skills. So get, bring all those up. But most important of everything is your communication skills, your attitude, and the quality of your ideas and how you communicate those ideas. That's going to be the most essential stuff. And I think you're learning a lot of that over at FCD. They do a good job over there at Feng Zhu School of Design. Noom Moon says, hey Trent, when you design assets like UI, do you just design the aesthetics of it or do you actually help make the layout? With League of Legends, I worked on that UI for about six months and it was a lot of back and forth and they changed the layout a little bit. I didn't really do much with the design of that, but sometimes you'd make an element and they'd go, hey, yeah, we want to move this over here because this is a cool visual appeal. Let's kind of shape that or push that over to here. When you're doing things like icons or something like that, uh, you know, that's that you're not changing anything. That's just like they give you the shape of it, the dimension of it. And you just have to encapsulate a complex idea into a tiny little painting. Who wouldn't love doing that? It's it's a fun job. We do tend to do this. You were asking later in your question uh, how much of this my studio does. We do a decent amount of UI design, uh, but mostly it's kind of a back burner job. When I'm doing a contract, I always keep two types of contracts at once. So we've got our very high level, like this is the this is the in-game assets that need a lot of revisions and feedback and a lot of communication to do. And those are like your props or your, your settings or your stages or your character designs. And then while we're waiting for feedback, we don't stop, brother. We keep going. That's when we're working on icons. That's when we're working on some UI stuff. Uh, in the case of cannonballers, though, sometimes I get a little mock-up of like, oh, the, the timer is supposed to be over here or something like that. In that case, though, I was kind of a co-creator on the project. So uh, I, gotta have, I got to have a lot of feedback and input on how, uh, where objects were placed and what information needed to be in the game to try to communicate to the player. Oh, he needs to know, the player needs to know what his objective is here, or the player needs to understand that he just accomplished this thing. Objectives are being met. What does he do now? Uh, you know, these things are very important for, for user interface because it's all about the game flow. So I've had to think a lot about game design flow for UI uh, with, with some of the recent mobile projects that I've been doing. But for the most part, I generally prefer not to do too much of that uh, because UI can be very time consuming. The UI on Diablo 3, for instance, took, now I didn't do a lot on that, but uh, the artist that was designated to do a lot of that, he spent five years reiterating and like redoing the whole UI many, many times over. And the version that you get now for the console version is night and day to where it started uh, even five, six years ago. Well, that would have been eight years ago now or nine years ago now. So UI goes through a lot of changes because it's all about the player experience. What's easy to communicate? Like, what does the player need to know? And that should be first and foremost. And I could do a whole video just about UI design. Speaking of comic books, uh, Cydonia OS says, uh, hello, I'm fairly new to this channel and your work in general. I don't know how to put it though, but you seem like a very knowledgeable artist. Well, thank you. Uh, do you have any advice for comic book making in terms of the creation of pages? Sometimes I feel as if I spend way longer than I hope. Uh, maybe it's me adding too much detail, but I've seen independent artists having a large range of illustrative comic pages. I spend roughly five to seven hours, uh, and that's longer than me making regular drawings that look more finished. Yeah, Cydonia, probably the way that I used to do it was I would, I would do a page a day, and I wouldn't do more... Uh, artwork on that page than what I could get done in a day. Uh, this did change towards the end of my run on Ghostwriter. I was doing about a page and a half a day because of some mess up with the schedule, uh, but which I don't need to go into. But the best thing you could do is, is stick to one page a day. 
And it's the if it's it's just got to be the best page you can do. Don't redo anything unless if it's really destructive to the flow of the story and you only do that after you've already completed the book. So Monday through uh, Friday, you got you should have five pages by the end of the week. The way I would do it is I'd always kind of do half of a page. So I'd pencil out the next page uh, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. And then I would be inking a different page throughout the day to try to just keep it interesting. So I wasn't staring at the same artwork for you know seven or eight hours throughout a day. If you're doing manga, you should be doing like three or four pages a day. Um, but that's a totally different beast. And you could really challenge yourself with that. I knew some guys who did 24 hour comic book challenges like Dan Fraga. He could draw a comic book in 24 hours, the whole book. And it was all about the, the flow of panels. I mean, that guy went on to direct TV shows and things like that. So like it really paid off. You learn this stuff and it will pay off in a lot of different ways for storyboarding and controlling the flow of, of storytelling through images. By setting the daily page standard for yourself you're basically saying i'm not going to go back and rework a ton of stuff i'm not going to be a perfectionist about this i do the best with what budget of time i've got and then you're moving on you're always moving forward instead of constantly going back and refixing things this is becomes a big challenge when you start to do concept art and it's all about revisions and things like that it's hard to go back to doing comic books uh, after that because i want to keep going back and fixing things but if i were doing a comic book now i would say this many pages per day and no matter what it takes, finish them. And if they're not great, that's it. I'm still, I'm moving on. The next pages will be better. Take everything that you learned, learn those lessons, and then carry them to the next page. This also keeps you from overdoing it with detail. So you're never like going, ah, oh, it could always be better. I'm going to keep going in and adding more. No, 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 no. Your timeline's up. You move on, brother. Speaking of timelines, dudes, I got, you know, that's, yeah, I had some really great comments this week. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. As per usual, you can always remember to leave comments and questions in the comments section below the video here, and I will read through them uh, next week. You can leave them in any video. I mean, I, I pull up my comments from any video. So if you leave a comment right now, I just might read that on next week's episode on Friday. I do this every Friday. As per usual, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. It's always good to connect with you guys. If you like my art style and uh, you would like to learn from me, I do, of course, make all of my brushes available and, of course, all of my tutorials available in my box sets of tutorials. Or if you're more just into the freebies, uh, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel here and I will be, I update about once or twice a week right now. And dudes, until next time, I'll catch you on manana. Bon ciao, baby, yeah.